Hey, Mr. Smith. Hey, I wanted to ask you a couple of questions. I've been asked from uh, a driver or two about our growth. Is there any truth that Smith Transport as a company is growing? And if so, why? So that's a, that's a good question, Eric. And, and, and the answer is yes, we are growing. And for those of you who have been with us the last couple of years, you've seen us grow quite a little bit. This, uh, this past year, or this, I'm sorry, this past week, uh, we are now north of 900 total drivers at all Smith companies combined. And uh, we've grown quite a little bit over the last couple of years. So why, why would a company grow? Um, so let me tell you, I'm gonna approach it a couple of ways. I'm gonna approach it from the financial aspect, and then we'll talk a little bit about the, uh, the longer term and why companies grow. Um, but a trucking company, takes a tremendous amount of capital or, or money uh, to continue to refurbish its fleet in terms of uh, newer tractors, newer trailers, um, technology, all the things that, that, that is required to keep the company fresh so that we can compete uh, in the marketplace going forward. And um, things that we cannot control would be health benefits, the cost of health benefits going up all the time. Uh, we can't control insurance premiums, and like in our in, the, in our industry, the in, the insurance costs have gone up tremendously 20, 30, some companies 40, 50 percent, uh, and that's a that's a cost you just cannot control. Uh, uh, as you buy new equipment, just like when you buy a new car, new pickup, whatever, every year that cost goes up. So, and there's many other fixed costs that you cannot control in our business. So as those costs go up, you've got to come up with a way to pay for all that cost. One way would be you charge more for your service that you, pro that you provide to the customer. Unfortunately, you can't control that. And what happened in 2019, I'm gonna to refer to what they call the spot market. Pricing in the spot market in 2019 versus 2018 went down by 25%. So let's put that in perspective. So if you're, if a truck generates, let's say $4,000 a week in revenue and the price goes down 25%, that's uh, uh, $500 or so uh, per week of lost revenue. But keep in mind, your costs just went up, health benefits, insurance premiums, all this other costs went up. So, the only way you can overcome that is you have to grow your top line. So as you continue to grow your top line, you spread your cost out over more trucks, over more miles, and that's how you, that's how you sustain your costs, and that's how you continue to stay in business. Smith Transport's been in business for 38 years, and, we can, and we've been in business for, the, for 38 years because we're extraordinarily financial stable. We understand cost containment, and we've been growing for 38 years, and you continue to do that. Let's talk about what happens if you don't grow. So in 2019, price goes down 25%. There were 800, over 800 trucking companies that have gone bankrupt, thus they've gone out of business in 2019. Most recently, the big one that went out of business was Celadon, 3,000 trucks, 3,000 drivers without a job. Horrible time right before Christmas. But that's what happens. If you don't grow at the same time, control your costs. We're very good at that at Smith Transport and we will continue to be very good at that. We have over 1,300 families across all Smith companies that depend on Smith companies for a, a way of living. That's a huge fiduciary responsibility for all of us. Right. And we take that very serious. So in the big picture, financial, the financial picture is that we grow again to control costs because price we can't control that the customer pays you. So hopefully that makes sense. And we will, um, we grew quite a little bit in uh, 18, we grew quite a little bit in 19. And uh, we've got a, a bunch of new trucks coming um, in my in our morning meeting this morning, I understand there's 64 new Peterbelts that are coming over the next two weeks 
uh, that will be put in service the first quarter of 2020. Uh, but we have we will continue to do that. Um, I, and again, on 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 the new trucks, um, you know, our our intent is is that truck is not broke down on the side of the road. Thus, you, our professional driver, you're 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 generating miles, generating income for yourself, versus sitting on the side of the road because the trucks broke down. Uh, we will continue to um, uh, monitor that and can and make sure that we've got the best of the best equipment on the road. So. Fundamentally, from a from a financial perspective, that's why you grow. Okay, and 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 that that's very informative. And I, I know you're busy, but but I have one more question I'd like to ask. <clears throat> you know, I talk to a lot of drivers during the course of the day, the week, the month. And another question is: so if if we're growing our fleet, um, are we also growing our customer base? Because a lot of individuals w would say, well, if we grow the fleet. That's going to take miles from me. Mm -hmm. Should you just give me those miles and not grow our fleet? Mm -hmm. So is our customer base going to grow? And if so, how does that affect the mileage for every driver in Smith Nation? Yeah, that's a really good question. So, so we're very, very cognizant of that, and and uh, uh, we are very. We have a lot of a lot of new business coming on. Um, matter of fact, I can I can talk about a piece of business that just started last Monday. And it's uh, it's it's uh, uh, many many loads per day that start in uh, in in Maine and they go all the way to Wisconsin and Illinois. So think about the miles of that. And then and then we're going to hook that freight on with a piece of business coming out of Wisconsin, many loads a day coming right back to Pennsylvania, right? So uh, that's the type of business that uh, uh, we're very focused on. A lot of that kind of new business is 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 uh, is coming on. Uh, at a pretty good, pretty good rate of speed. The new business is 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 really you know uh, based on service. Uh, you know we've got to have really good service, which we do. And uh, based on that good service, we're able to go to the market and, and and get the business that we're looking for. And then we try to put it in the contract to stay out of that spot market that I was talking about earlier, so that we've got a consistent price that we can depend on over the next 12 months uh, with that new piece of business. But we're doing that. Plus, the other thing that we're doing, and is that um, you know we have uh, people focused on the network, and we'll call this network op optimization. So, we're getting, I think, a lot better at doing this. Is that even though a, a load of freight may go from A to B, it may be perfect length of haul, let's say 500 miles, uh, which you can get on and off of it in 24 hours. But if that piece of business has uh, delay loading, delay unloading, and, and has repetitive delay loading or unloading, we're going to identify that and we're going to take that piece of business out of the network mm -hmm. because on paper it looks good, but and when you actually go to haul it, it, it's not good because you're putting what we call too much time with that load and thus it has a negative impact on our driver's ability to meet the miles that they're looking for to make their paycheck that they're looking for. And we're going to get, we, 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 we worked on that to a certain degree in 2019, but that's one of our main initiatives uh, starting in 2020, is make sure our network is optimized, that we can get what we call the revenue miles per week per truck that maximizes the driver's ability to make a paycheck that they're looking for on a weekly basis. Uh, so that is happening, that, that's, uh, that's, that's happening uh, as we speak. Great, great. Well, that answers that. Well, those are really the questions that, that I had. And I want to appreciate you for your time. Um, is there anything else you'd like to tell Smith and Nation before we? Well, first thing, probably the most important thing I want to wish everybody is a Merry Christmas. Uh, you know, Christmas is a special time. It's uh, the meaning of Christmas is, uh, is, is, is very important. And uh, for those of you who um, uh, hopefully uh, uh, get home for your families, uh, you will uh, 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 spend some quality time with your families over the next, next couple of weeks and, uh, and enjoy your families. Second thing is uh, 2020, uh, we, 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 we're really looking for a very robust uh, year in 2020. I think the market's gonna be really, really good. Um, the thing we can't predict in the first quarter is weather, uh, and that obviously hurts all of us. But uh, rest assured that uh, we will be here for each and every one of you. Uh, we want you to be successful. We've got great equipment. Uh, we've got a really robust budget. Uh, we've got a lot of freight uh, to haul in 2020. We've got a great customer base and working together, being safe, number one, high service, uh, but working together, uh, we're gonna make 2020 a great year. So 
Thank you for being part of the team in 2019. I look forward to working with you again in 2020.